How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ my Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken. I am forgiven, the King of Kings calls me his own, beautiful Savior.
transition, it's good to be with you in worship today. I invite you to please stand as you are able. On this Sunday and every day of our lives, we gather to worship God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We invite you to share the peace with one another as you feel comfortable, a wave, a peace sign, a hug, a handshake, whatever might work for you. Peace to you. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
lesson today is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 11, 1 through 11. And <clears throat> Paul writes, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, then the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Please stand if you are able for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel is from Matthew chapter 13 verses 1 through 9 and 18 through 23. Matthew writes, That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him, that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, since they had no root, and they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on the good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. If you have ears, hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is that which was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a little while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but cares, the cares of this age and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the word of the Lord. Awesome. Well, good morning. How are you? Good. I'm Pastor Dan. We had a different Pastor Dan last week. I'm a little furrier uh, than he is. Uh, and so, but it's good to be, to be with you. Are any of you expert gardeners? Good. I always get, so I get to go to churches all across Indiana and Kentucky and talk to folks, and I get really nervous when we have readings about planting stuff, when I go to some of these rural congregations, because they know a lot more than I do about planting things. So I feel safe today that I may, if, even if I get it wrong, you won't know. So in my pocket here, I've got two different things in each of my hands. And so when you sow seed, um, according to the reading that we just had this morning, you kind of throw the, the seed on the ground and, and let it see what'll happen. Some people who really like have the time and the effort, they'll like dig little holes and put the seed in. Um, other folks just throw it and see what happens. And so in my hand, I have two different kinds of seed. Do you see them? Oh, that's because they're invisible seed. That, that, I should have told you that. So. In this one hand, I have the seed of love. In this other hand, I have the seed of hate. 
seeds. So I think all of us have both of these seeds in us too. And I think all of us can make a choice as to which seed we're going to sow, which seed we're going to plant. I can easily throw seeds of love at those people that I meet. I can say nice things to them. I can tell them how important they are to me. I can tell them that they matter in life. I can also just as easily throw seeds of hate. I won't throw them at you. I'll throw them over here. I can throw them at people. I can say things like, you're not as good as me. You don't matter. You stink. I can sow either type of seed. Which, which, this may be a really easy question. You all seem very smart. But which seed do you think Jesus wants us to sow? Love or hate? Love. Yeah, I think Jesus wants us to, to sow love too. And I think it can be hard sometimes to sow love. But I think other times we make it a lot harder than it needs to be. Because God gives us all the love that we could ever imagine and invites us to, to cast it out, to throw it on all the people that we meet at school, at church, in our neighborhood, whatever it may be, wherever we meet people. And so next time you're with somebody, I just want you to think about, I could sow love, I could sow hate. What would it look like if I sowed love just as Jesus has poured love on me? It's an invitation. You can do with it what you want. And all of us. Adults, too, we have the same invitation, too, to think about how God is calling us to sow, too. Let's say a prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for giving us love. And we ask that you would give us the courage to, to, to pour that love, to scatter those seeds of love on everybody we meet, even when it's hard. Be with us this week. Be with us in the weeks ahead as we prepare for school. And remind us that you love us all the time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. My name is Pastor Dan Forehand once again, and I serve as assistant to the bishop for ministry transition here in the Indiana-Kentucky Synod. That's a fancy title, which means I get to work with anybody who's experiencing change in their lives. Pastors who are looking for a new call, congregations like yourself who for the first time in a long time are without a pastor and who are looking for a new pastor, and other folks who are just discerning what God might be calling them to do. It's a great gift and a great joy to go out to congregations and to, to hear their stories and to see what God might be up to in their midst. And so today I bring you greetings from our Bishop Bill Guffey and the rest of of the Senate staff, you got to meet Bishop or Assistant to the Bishop Dan Fugate last week, and our Director for Evangelical Mission Nancy Nyland two weeks ago. Greetings from them, and greetings from the other 170 congregations across this mission territory. I thank you as well for your partnership for what we call mission support that allows us to work together in this great work across this Senate and around the church throughout the world. Your mission support goes to help congregations in transition to support my work of visiting them and supporting them. It helps congregations and communities affected by disasters, most recently tornadoes in southern Indiana and Kentucky and flooding last year in Kentucky as well. It also goes around the world to support organizations like Lutheran World Relief that work to help uh, those who are dealing with hunger in any form across the globe. So thank you, each of you, for your support and your partnership in this work. In high school, one of the things that I loved to do was theater. And part of our, our daily time as we got ready for rehearsals and such was to do vocal warm-ups. Um, I know those of you who are athletes probably laugh and say a vocal warm-up. Well, you, you didn't have to run laps. But we did these vocal warm-ups that involved spitting and blah, 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 making, trying to open up our mouths. And one of them was always tongue twisters. And we had a whole whole list of tongue twisters, some that, that you know, some that you don't know. Um, and so every time this reading comes up, one of the first things that I think about is that old, old tongue twister of, you know, Sally sells seashells by the seashore, which, you know, you, you can, if you need to do it real quick, you can do it. 
Okay, nobody needed to do it. I'm sure people at home were doing it. Uh, so you do that really fast and you, your tongue gets all twisted up. And of course, there's no seashells here, and, and there might be somebody named Sally in this reading, but she's not named if she is. But it's Jesus instead who is telling a parable about sowers who are sowing seed, and he's telling it by the seashore. There's something kind of ironic and, and, and funny about that in some ways. I grew up in, in Daytona Beach, Florida, and so the sea was a place that I became quite friendly with and quite accustomed to. And I went back earlier this year after the hurricanes from the past year or so, and, and the seashore looks nothing like it did when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I remember the, the dunes that were growing up on the edges, and, and outside of the dunes were these huge sea oats that were growing out of them. I, I have a band-aid on my thumb. That's how bad of a gardener I am. I'm not a green thumb at all. I go and buy like the professional grade potting soil. I dig the hole. I put the seed in. I water it and I get like one tomato and I celebrate. Then I think about my days growing up and, and these sea oats that are growing in the sand, like the worst soil of all. And then a few feet behind, beyond them in the soil are trees, palm trees and other trees that are growing up too. And it's like, come on, how can this be possible? Sand is like the worst possible soil to plant something in, and yet there's these great sea oats that, that grow. And then a storm comes, like the hurricanes of the past couple of years, and it erodes the beach and takes them all out. But in a couple of years, these sea oats will return once again. Which is why sometimes I think the story is extra ironic because it's being told on the seashore, on the, the shore of a lake, on the shore of a body of water where I'm sure there's lots of sand. It's probably not the greatest area for farming, and this is where Jesus is talking about this sower who's scattering seed. Jesus talks about the rocky ground, the thorny ground, the, the path where the birds eat up the, the, the seed. He doesn't talk about the sand and how sometimes in the sand, sometimes in places where we don't think there's any hope of growth, think about the parking lots you walk through where you see flowers in the middle of a parking lot. Think about going on a hike in a hillier, rocky place in the mountains or something and you see a tree literally growing out the side of a mountain. Think about the beach and the sea oats, these places where growth really shouldn't be happening. Jesus is in one of those places talking about different places where things can grow, talking to people who are wondering how they can grow as well. For you all, the people here at King of Glory, you find yourself in a unique place for the first time in a long time, without a called pastor, without even an interim pastor, uh, so you're in this place where these Sundays you're getting these different people who come in and talk to you. We finally this week got you a pastor of record who can support the council and support in emergency situations, but it's just different. And maybe for the last 22 years you've seen this pastor as the one who is the sower, the one who, who you all have equipped and empowered to go and to, to scatter those seeds, those seeds of love and grace and hope, those seeds of Jesus, to help other people hear the good news of Jesus, to come and be a part of this community and see and hear God's love. But now, I wonder if it's each of us. We've always been called, all of us, to be sowers. But it's easy to say, well, we'll let the pastor do that. But I wonder if for you all, in this time of transition, if there is that invitation to be sowers yourself. Because each of you, whether you're a kid, whether you're a teenager, whether you are in your working years of life, whether you're in retirement years, wherever you might be, if you're joining us online, whatever it is you may find yourself at, in that place, at this time, God is inviting you to join the seed-sowing mission. 
whether you're by the seashore, whether you're by Keystone Parkway, wherever it is that God has planted you, you are invited to take part in that. And again, as I said, I'm not an expert at agriculture by any stretch of the imagination. But when I hear this parable, when I see what Jesus is saying, he talks about a sower who probably doesn't really know what he's doing either in some ways, right? Because if he was smart, he wouldn't be scattering seed on the path. He wouldn't be scattering seed in the thorny ground. He'd be finding the good ground. But maybe there's so much seed, so much love that God gives to us that, that we scatter away. Scatter away. Do your best. Have fun with it. Enjoy this gift that God has given to you. And trust that the sower just throws the seeds out and then what happens, happens. Trees start growing on the sides of mountains. Flowers start bursting forth in the midst of parking lots. Sea oats grow in that sandy soil that shouldn't grow anything at all. Who knows what happens when we dare to be bold enough to sow the seeds that God has given to us. And so for you all, in this midst of transition, in this time of change, where it's not certain how long you'll be without a pastor, what the next pastor will look like, anything like that, you can live in fear and worry, or you can live in kind of a playful hospitality and grace. Yeah, try not to burn the building down, that would be bad, but you know, a lot of other things, let's just try stuff. Let's have some fun. Let's see what it is that God might be doing and calling us to do as we scatter the seed that God has given to us. Because I think we worship a God who has these little winks sometimes. Like telling a story about scattering seed, not in the middle of a farm, but by the seashore inviting those who are there to hear that parable and to imagine what God might be calling them to sow seed in their own communities. So friends, you could take this as an invitation to go to the beach, which sounds really great. Go ahead and do that wherever you need to go to get equipped to be a seed thrower, a seed sower for God. Whether your name be Sally or Sam or Samantha or Stingrid, or whatever your S name may be, or if you haven't been blessed with an S name, the, the tongue twister doesn't work as well, but it's still something that you can do. Look in the mirror tomorrow or today and say, I believe that I've been called to sow seeds wherever it is that I'm planted. Friends, may we have the curiosity in our lives to see what the great sower what God, as God teaches us through God's sowing, what the great sower might possibly work in our lives, and how new life and new growth may pop up in surprising ways in this time of transition here for you all and beyond as well. May we experience God's grace and love for us, not just something to, to know in our minds, but something to feel within us. May we experience God's grace and love not as something that keeps us the same, but that helps us to grow. And if you find yourself today feeling like there's thorns all around you, feeling like you're on rocky ground, feeling like there's no fertile soil here, may you trust and know that we worship a God who works miracles by the seashore, in cities and communities all around us, and here in churches, too. Please know, in this time of transition, as you sow seeds of love, that we pray for you, that we love you, and that we walk alongside of you. Go, spread seed by the seashore, now and every day of your lives. Amen.
Let us confess our sins together to God, our Creator, and our Redeemer. Gracious God, we are so grateful that we are loved by you, O Lord, with an unconditional love. It is in that spirit that we come to you and confess our sins. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not fully loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have at times neglected your word. We ask you. Yes, O oh Lord, our God. Secure in the grace by which we are saved. Amen. Friends, as a called and ordained minister of God's word and sacrament and by God's authority, I therefore declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, Jesus Christ has covered all our sins by his atoning death on the cross. Let us therefore be inspired by Christ to do God's will by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first thing I think about when I see this offering plate today is a feeling of gratitude for all of you who are continuing to contribute to King of Glory financially and for the ways that goes beyond King of Glory to support mission support throughout this synod and throughout the globe. You see on the screen the link for e-giving if you are interested in giving that way. We are, of course, even more grateful for your prayers of support. of the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. Let us pray. Guide your church, O God, to sow seeds of forgiveness, of love, and righteousness on whatever soil you give to us. Direct your people to proclaim your love in this congregation, King of Glory, this synod, the Indiana Kentucky Synod, and throughout the world. Sustain your creation, O God, by sending favorable weather, causing trees and fields to grow, protecting waterways from pollutions, and helping all of us to be good stewards of what you have given to us. We pray for peace in this world, O oh God, for places of conflict like Ukraine and Sudan, and those places closer to home as well. We ask you to heal those who are sick, O oh God, especially those we name before you now, both aloud and in the silence of our hearts.
We pray for doctors, nurses, therapists, and others who work alongside of those who are sick, asking you to guide them and direct their work. We ask you to inspire us by the faithful saints who've gone before us, O God, examples of your embodied love whose confidence in the resurrection guides us in living lives worthy of the gospel. We pray all these things, trusting you hear our prayers, knowing you love us and knowing you walk with us this day and every day of our lives. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So friends, as we prepare for communion, all who are baptized are welcome to receive communion this day. We pray that you would join us and be with us at this table today. And as we gather at this table, we remember the words that Jesus showed as he gathered. In the the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together the words that Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is. Forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. For those of you here, you may be seated. For those of you who are joining us online, we believe that this table extends from here to wherever it is that you are, and we invite you to take communion as well. This is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. For those of you who are here, who have the prepackaged elements and wish to remain at your seat, this is the time to take that communion. Again, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. All are welcome at God's table. Friends, now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen us and keep us in God's grace and peace now and forever. Amen.
God, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, we post weekly, or you all, I don't do it, you all, post weekly worship services on your website, kogcarmel.org. Blessings to you. Gather again next Sunday at 10 a.m. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.